All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. In this one, I'm actually interviewing a good friend of mine, John Danes. Uh, John is a close friend and associate in the sort of agency space. Uh, you know, he doesn't live that far away. He lives only a couple hours drive away, and uh, we plan on meeting up fairly soon, actually, and uh, just sharing a cigar or something like that. Um, he's a great dude, really brilliant mind. Uh, really enjoyed this interview with him. Hopefully, you get something good out of this interview. Um, you know, John runs a business that if you were to sell it, could easily sell it for, you know, at least a million or more. Um, you know, it's a fifty to $60,000 a month revenue business. They keep pretty high margins on the work that they do, and they do lead generation for uh, real estate agents and, and brokerages. So it's a really interesting niche that he's working in, and a lot of his job right now consists of just filling the pipe and taking sales calls, and soon he'll be training a sales team, and it's actually something I'm helping him with a little bit on the side. So he's a really, really cool dude, and uh, it's a pleasure having him in my network and being able to just watch him grow and just consider him a, a close associate and a friend. Uh, and look, if you're wanting to scale your agency and you're wanting to get it to a point where you know you can consider it a, not just you know a solid income stream to maybe quit your job, but like a real, business and like a lifestyle business and one that you can be really proud of and maybe even sell one day, uh, I would encourage you to book a call using the link in the description. You'll either be talking with myself or a highly trained team member and we're just going to sort of figure out where you're at and where you want to get and see if you're in a good place for us to help you and if not, it's it's no hard feelings, uh, but we only take win-win clients right now. So that being said, if that interests you, book a call using the link in the description. Otherwise, I recommend watching this video front to back. Uh, using a pen and pad to really take down some notes because John's a really smart dude and this interview was a really special one um, And you know if you were to get this sort of training, you know in like a course or something You know they would charge you tons of money But uh, my goal is just to bring you a lot of value and really help you out today So hopefully this is a valuable video for you I encourage you to watch it all the way through and share what you've learned in the comments down below once again Welcome to the channel John. What's up John? Not a whole lot man. How you doing? Doing good. Good to have you on the channel, man. Uh, we've been friends for a long time. It's a long time coming for sure. Um, I know you guys are doing pretty well at uh, Lead Jolt. Um, uh, what John told me, you know, they did about 50,000 last month, monthly recurring, and they're continuing to do pretty well uh, with a done for you service, I believe, generating uh, leads for real estate agents. Is, am, I, am I correct in that? Yeah. 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 So appointments, but yeah, leads, appointments. Yeah. Appointments. Got it. Big difference. That, that's an yeah. important Good yeah. distinction. So they're just booking calls on the real estate agents calendars uh, using your campaigns, right? Yeah. So what we've basically done is built an outsourced call center. We run ads for them. The uh, leads are funneled from those ads to the call center. And then um, my inside sales agents, or we call them concierges, uh, in my outsourced call center are um, calling the leads and booking appointments over the phone. So they're kind of qualifying the leads for the agents and, um, and basically uh, putting them straight onto our clients' calendars. And there's a few people that do it, um, but we're, we've actually brought it fully in-house. So I don't use like a, when I say outsource, I mean, they're not physically with me in Tennessee, uh, but they're, they're our team, they're our staff, and we don't like outsource it or pay another company to do it for us. So it's all in-house. It's awesome. It's a great yeah. service. And it speaks to something that we talk a lot about and I talk a lot about. It's just like holistically solving your client's problem. It's like one of the things yeah. that's been a huge trend of in like, call it SMMA, call it B2B, what, what, freaking whatever you want to call it, just serving business owners with a service. It's like they focus on like one thing, like I'm going to run Facebook ads for this niche or YouTube ads for this niche, but they never think about like the fulfillment process and like what they're actually going to do with that traffic and making sure it converts. So if you wouldn't mind, like share like the process of developing your offer and like what realizations you've had that have led you to developing the offer you've got right now. Cause nobody starts off with an offer as developed as yours. So kind of walk me through some yeah. of this evolution. 100%. So, um, I got started running an agency about uh, a year and a half ago and was kind of doing a bunch of different things. I always say I was helping anybody with a credit card, you know, it's kind of just like, uh, if you don't have the right help, that's what you're going to do. So you're just going to basically help anyone out there uh, who's ready to pay you and did a bunch of different industries. I actually had some experience in real estate, which not a lot of people know. I worked at, as an assistant at a local uh, real estate brokerage and I was like cold calling leads and kind of doing some stuff for them. And I realized pretty quickly that like, this is a big, big problem for real estate agents. So um, I think that's a really good way to kind of build your product market fit, which 
Uh, people talk about that in like software and like other industries, but not a lot of people talk about it in the agency space. And you like, you have to have it. Like uh, if I'm trying to go after somebody and uh, my offer doesn't resonate with them, I'm not going to sell it. So I saw firsthand what real estate agents were struggling with, the hoops they were trying to jump through in order to get clients and how many of them were failing epically. Um, the statistic is that 89% of agents fail in their first five years, meaning they totally give up. And, uh, you know, there's the uh, Pareto law, they call it in, in every business, like, you know, the, even the, tw what is it, the 20% of agency owners are probably out there getting 80% of the clients. It's the same in real estate, but it's even more steep. So it's more like 10% of agents are getting 90% of the business. So it's even more steep in, in real estate as an industry. And there's this widening gap between uh, agents who are just getting started and trying to do some transactions and um, people who are just crushing it and selling 10 to 15 houses a month. So I wanted to kind of help my clients get there. And I'd helped a bunch of different industries and with varying success, I did e-commerce businesses, I did info product, and I just tried to kind of close anybody that I could. And we brought on a real estate agent in Texas who's still a client to this day. And we got him killer results. And uh, I was like, okay, I think we've, we've identified our niche. And I think one of the most important things as an agency owner about picking your niche is once you pick one, don't change it. Uh, for me, at least, because it was like, I is, you know, the more sales calls I took, the more I started to speak the lingo, the more I started to learn about the niche. Although I wasn't like crushing it right out the gate, I still went really, really deep on the industry and still like learned a lot of good skills and learned the lingo and stuff like that, which I think is really important. Uh, like if you're talking to a chiropractor or a doctor or a dentist and you don't speak that lingo, they're probably going to laugh you out of the meeting. Like you got to be good at sales, but you also have to know your customer, know your client. So we got them. We got Daniel's name. He's one of our big clients now, one of our biggest case studies still. We got him really good results. And I was like, okay, I think this is a problem that we can solve for more people. And at that point, we're just doing leads. And, uh, you know, we're bringing agents, in some cases, hundreds of leads a month. So in February of this year, that's when we really started to, to uh, develop the offer and decide we only want to work with real estate agents. So we're serving them leads. Uh, that was kind of the, the first ad addition, if you will, uh, or version of our offer. Then we started to implement some marketing automation. So I was like, okay, well, you know, they're calling these leads and reaching out to these leads. What if there were automated systems in place to text, email, voicemail, Facebook message the clients? So we put that in place and that helped us charge more and get better results. So it was kind of the second layer of what we did. And we brought on about 30 clients um, from February to April um, with the, the marketing automation. And then I realized like um, the reason they're paying me for leads is so they can save time and make more money. And when I'm serving you hundreds of leads and you have to call each and every single one of them, uh, I'm not really doing my job correctly. So I said, I want to have inside sales agents who are going to call your leads for you and book appointments straight onto your calendar. Um, because like walking into a meeting, and this is one thing that we say in our pitch, like everyone knows that they're going to have to invest some sort of financial resources. I think about 99% of the time that's out of the equation. Like people know they're going to have to spend money, but what other resources are they going to have to spend as a client? Are they going to have to spend time? Are they going to have to get team involved? Like what other resources are they going to have to put into working with you? And I think a lot of times that's super, super important. So I wanted to kind of take that out of the equation and literally say, all I need you to do is show up to these appointments that we're putting on your calendar. And if you can do that, you're going to have success with what I'm, what I'm offering here. And now it's really, um, it's made logistics so much better because it's just like a client could come on board with us five days later can start having appointments just with the systems we put in place. And, uh, you know, they're, they don't have to be super stretched and have like a, a bunch of bandwidth to take on all this stuff because it's just two, three appointments a day on their calendars with qualified prospects, which is coming out to, you know, uh, 30, 60, 90 appointments a month. And it's great. So that's uh, that's kind of how we built the offer in, in a Cliff Notes uh, version. And uh, yeah, man, so it's been fun. It's awesome, dude. And uh, one of the things that you're, you're really embodying um, that we speak to in, in our educational programs and people we work with to help them grow, it's like just getting like obsessed with the problems that your niche faces. Yeah. And like a lot of people think that the secret is just sales. Or the secret is just ads. Or the secret is just one thing, but it's not. It's like having a holistic view of your industry that, like yeah. that statistic, like 89% of real estate agents don't last more than five years. Like what a powerful yeah. way to start 
a conversation with an agent. Like, do you want to be one of the 89% or do you want to be one of the 11 that makes it and actually does really well? Right. And then like right. 10%, 90% of the market, like these things, like you need to know these things in order to be a genuine expert for your industry. Right. Uh, I think one of the things that is really overlooked, uh, especially with, you know, the typical like, hey, you know, if you want to quit your job and make money online to start an agency, it's like, there's, there's more to it. And that's, that's, yeah. that's the gap you fill. I think everybody starts there like, hey, I just want to not have to work at McDonald's like two management right. clients, you know, it's, it's where I started. I just didn't want to get a normal job and you know, you know, it's this huge thing. Um, but yeah, dude, just kind of like speak to the stages that you've gone through in terms of your mentality. So like for me, it's like, yeah. you know, just like I said, just not wanting to work a job and then it moved into like, frick, I'm kind of sitting on a pot of gold here. I didn't realize it. And then it moved into like balancing my personal life and, cutting out people that I didn't want to be around and building an environment that's really easy for me to succeed in. And there's all kinds of things. And obviously people yeah. can just dig into my channel and see all that. But for you, like what, what have been, what have, what have been the stages of your mentality? Yeah. Yeah. You know, cause 50 grand a month's not something to just blink your eye at and move on. It's like, you know, it's, right. it's legit. I mean, and we're both young dudes. So like, I remember yeah. one of our, like we were just connecting and hanging out over the phone. You're like, dude, this is, this is one percenter money and we really need to tap ourselves on the back and, yeah. and realize like we're doing it. So yeah. just kind of hear your mentality. Cause I know we, we think very similarly and I think people are going to make a, a very common distinction between us, but I'm curious to hear how yeah. you would portray your mental journey here. Yeah, it's a really good question. I think it's something that a lot of people graze over and like, dude, you know, you and I jam out and talk on the phone and we're buddies. Like I think uh, you and I would both agree. We're just normal dudes. Um, and I think like, you know, if I go to uh, a party or, you know, a gathering, and I'm, you know, you're not supposed to be at too many gatherings right now, but if I were to be at one, people would just be like, oh, this is just a regular old dude. He might be in college. I'm not like, you know, you don't wear a sign on your shirt that says I make 50 grand a month. I'm the man, which, uh, you know, exactly. So, uh, like, that's what I mean with normal dudes, obviously. But I think the biggest thing that so many people struggle with in the beginning is like, it's out there. The info's out there. Uh, I think too many people struggle to literally just sit down and look at the laptop and not get up until the work's done or they're achieving what they want to achieve. I think so many people, um, I think, it, I don't know what it stems from because I had the problem so much and that's why I can talk about it so vividly and think back to that being where I was because I knew what I wanted, but like, doing it was just like this big reaper of doom, if you will, of just like, you got to do the work and you got to sit down and do it. And that's what I struggled with for so long was just like, and I would buy programs and spent money and all that. And I was just kind of like, I just am still struggling to get the work done. So I think like the, how the mentality change is just, you just do it, you know, rain, sleet or shine, like regardless of how you feel, uh, regardless of how many hours of sleep you got the night before, you know, you need to be healthy. Obviously no, no point in killing yourself to make 50 grand a month. But I mean, like there's going to be days where you have three to five, six, seven sales calls and you just feel like absolute crap and you have to do it. And I think that's as cliche as it, as it is, that's what separates people that are doing really well from the people who are just doing okay. So I think you have to be able to focus and sit down and do the work. And it's really, really hard because there's like, there are all these tools to make money right now on the internet, but there's also a lot of things on the internet that are sitting there to distract you and they're within arm's reach, you know, uh, like picking up and scrolling around and getting distracted. So I think I started there, same thing. I was like, I don't want to go to college. I never even started college. And then it came to, I don't want to work a job. I don't want to have to go get a job. And then it came to like, um, you know, I want to build something massive. I think it kind of made a huge leap, but I think, um, doing the work and be able to sit down and just make it happen and focusing on stuff that actually makes you money, you know? So it's, it's super important. And uh, I think that's what a lot of people struggle with when they first get started. Uh, I really do think that like a journey is filled with peaks and troughs and how you hold yourself yeah. in the troughs defines the whole journey. hundred um, percent. Entirely, you know, I mean, don't get it twisted. Like everybody has really rough weeks and months and days. And it's, mm -hmm. yeah part of doing it like so yeah i mean that's one of the things that i've really helped that has really helped me sorry it's just like yeah. accepting the downs accepting the highs so i read a really good book it talked about how life is it kind of swings like this pendulum 
It's like yeah. really good, then really bad, then really good, then yeah. really bad. It just, it's go, always going to swing. And the pendulum wins when you give it your attention. So your goal is right. to lean into the highs and fix the lows. It's more like to just let the highs be highs and let the lows be lows, but stay who you are right. throughout the process. And so when you know who you are and know what makes you up, that's when you can stay consistent. So if I word my own journey similar to that, that's kind of what I've come to. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like, we'll have a $10,000 day and I used to flip out and I'm like, it's just whatever. And, and then we have, you know, days where we lose 10 grand. And I'm like, it's just whatever, you know, it's yes. whatever. Keep moving. Just use the data. Um, so I'm curious then, dude, like what right now are the next steps for you? Like 50 grand a month. Obviously, there's no such thing as a, like, you know, people market quantum leaps, but really there's no big leaps. But like, what are the bottlenecks right now? Like, how do you, how do you get to a hundred or how do you get to seven figures at least? Like, what are the things that are really stopping you from doing that right now? Uh, just to kind of download, like, you know, the sorts of frustrations you face at your level. Cause a lot of people, you know, they get frustrated with, you know, scaling past two clients or in there, they're like, Oh, you know, their problem is time or client expectations, or they can't find more clients or whatever. I just love for people to yeah. hear what problem is at somebody's scale like yours. Yeah. I think um, a big one right now for us is just like getting the right people in the right places. I think that's big. And then I also just think it's like, uh, I was listening to, there's a guy named Alex Ramosi. I'm not sure if you've, you're familiar with him. Yeah, uh, yeah, he, yeah, he owns Gym Launch. And he was talking on this uh, webinar and he was like, if there was one thing I could have told myself, I would have just spent more money on ads. And uh, when we have got ads working and we transition our offer and stuff, but when we did have them working, they were working really well. And I look back and like, wish we would have spent more. So we're continuing to scale those back up and uh, going to continue to scale with those and then get the right people in the right places. Because once the bottleneck of, I bring on a client and I can get them consistent results is gone. It's kind of just turns into sales and marketing and managing the team and like operations and stuff. And, um, I, I kind of look at it as like, you know, outsource different things. And I think I'm sales is my best thing. So it's been the last thing that I've wanted to outsource because I'm the best at it. And we basically have everything else systems in place for everything else, right. For operations, for client fulfillment, for marketing, for outbound prospecting, uh, and we're getting stuff in place for ads. And then the last thing is going to be um, sales. And then we'll get the sales stuff outsourced. And then we're going to literally just jam and work on product and talk oh. to customers all day. So that's oh. kind of where we're trying to be. So it's really everything that's working just without you is the bottleneck, really. Yeah. yeah. I'm the bottleneck. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really, really good. All right. Just had to pause the recording real quick for a quick break. But, um, I honestly forget what we were even talking about. Hopefully we stay congruent with what we were saying earlier. But um, another question that I actually asked another guy that I was interviewing recently, just like a, just a buddy, uh, was like, right now, what are, what is the like mental barrier that you're currently facing, if there are any? Because obviously, you know, you've told me the technical barriers and really it just kind of came down to like, you know, um, prospecting sales and delivery. I mean, that's, the barrier for everyone at the end of the day it's prospecting sales and delivery it's yeah. just like yeah. those things up. like what's the mental barrier for you right now like if there are any if there's any that you can identify and be like look if i could get over this idea mm -hmm. of myself or of my business you know and if i could get over this i would go to that next level like what is that for you if you have the self-awareness to to dig deep and see what that is yeah dude i think when you've built from nothing you kind of have like this mentality of like really wanting to hold on way too tight to things. And I think that can cause you to have like, like the two barriers are said, when you spend more money on ads, we need to have more people. Not only are those technical barriers, but they're also kind of like mental barriers because I'm, uh, you know, we're just to get real specific. We're spending like 200 a day right now on ads. Well, what if we take it to 500? Like what could happen then? But it's also a way bigger risk. It goes from, what is that? like 6,000 a month to uh, what would that be like 15,000 a month? Right. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it would be uh, 16, or 16,000 500. Yeah, exactly. So um, I, I think that's a mental barrier in and of itself saying, okay, what if I have to get a little bit less profitable? That'll be uncomfortable. What will change my lifestyle? If I have to do that, what will happen? What could happen? And I think that's a mental barrier. And I also think uh, entrepreneurs, have this mentality of like, uh, 
you know, there's that saying, and it's really popular in the South. Like it's kind of slipping me a little bit, but it's like, uh, if, um, if you want it done right, do it yourself. That's one thing that I always heard growing up. And I think that's uh, BS. I really do in a lot of ways. But I think a lot of entrepreneurs and have limiting beliefs of like bringing on team and scaling the organization and outsourcing different parts of their business. Um, I mean, like me and you both, bro, for the volume that we're at, we have very lean staff. And uh, it's a whole different thing to manage an ad set or manage a sales call than it is to manage another freaking human being. And I think, and especially like a, and I'm not, you know, I have virtual assistants. I'm not talking about like virtual assistants that you communicate with over Slack. I'm talking about people that are talking to clients and, you know, uh, doing sales calls or doing fulfillment or running ad campaigns. And I think there's a lot of variables there. So I think there's uh, probably some of that flawed mindset of like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, so I'd say those are probably two of the biggest things. I think there's... Uh, Everybody has some sort of scarcity mindset. And I, wanna, I wouldn't want to say it's that, but I would say it's, it's definitely um, figuring out how I can train people most effectively and transfer everything I've learned directly into somebody. And uh, I think that's really what's going to help us scale and kind of what the, the, the mindset barrier is right now. Mm. Yeah. Really interesting. I don't think people understand that, you know, even at a multiple, multiple five figure monthly level, like, it just presents new challenges. It's not even that things get like things get, it gets easier to honestly, I've found that it's easier effort wise to run the business. Like I feel like I'm putting in a lot less mental oh, yeah. effort, but in yeah. order to solve the problems that you and I are facing, it's an, it's, it's really just like a paradigm shift and it's fixing core things that you're just given by society. Like, like if you want it done, right, right. do it yourself. These sorts of like just notions right. that just float in your brain that you're not, not even aware are there. And just tackling those things right. entirely and, and, and not accepting the pre-existing notions of what it means to run a business and what it means to make money and what it means to live life this way. So, yeah, that's been, been a big one for me, um, you know, basically accepting nothing as truth and just looking at data um, in my business. If I want to make more money, I just, you know, turn up the ad spin. If I want more free time, I put people in place. It's like accepting that we have full control has been the challenge for me. Um, because often I can feel like, like you said, when you build it from scratch, my thing, another downside to having built it from scratch is you're still living with like a pedestrian mentality. Like you're still living with like, a, you know, I am, I'm still kind of just the same kid that just got that, you know, built this thing and this thing is separate from me. And I'm not even sure that it's like, you know, that I'm like worthy of it or whatever. And so getting to a point where it's like, it is you and you built it and you could do it again if you had to, you can do it 10 times bigger if you want to. Um, and really, ex and, and getting uh, these sorts of false beliefs out. I don't know if does that does that resonate with you. I saw you nodding your head there. Oh, dude, one hundred percent. When uh, when we were first starting to scale up, Trey, I wouldn't even look at like how much money we made because I couldn't even like you know people talk about imposter syndrome. I couldn't even like conceptualize. Like when we started to make twenty, thirty k a month, I wouldn't even like look because it was just like I couldn't even conceptualize like how this was even possible. Uh, mm. so I think I still probably have that, uh, mentality a little bit, like, dude, if I did this and I pulled this off, I'm, I'm a little scared to hand things off to other people and outsource, but it truly is the only way to scale. Uh, I forget who did a talk on this, but it was really valuable talk. It's, uh, you know, like the leverage that you have and like in, in each stage of bringing on key players, you're, you're building that leverage. And I think that's like what we're all looking to, to build in our businesses is just like ultimate leverage over everything. And you're in a place where you're just managing and you're just an operator or not an operator, but you're kind of just like a, an owner, right? Where you, you're, you're managing everything and you're seeing everything happen, but you're doing it from kind of a distance and things are just running. And then you get to a point where if your business is optimized, like you said, it is a machine. Okay. Uh, you were, you were telling me about somebody the other day and it, I think when you and I talked on the phone, or maybe you were talking about it in a video and you were telling a story about this guy and you're like, yeah, he spends 30 grand a month on ads per rep, packs their calendar out. And so I'm starting to do math. I'm like, okay, our lifetime value is this. Our average customer spends this. 30 grand a month would get us this many appointments. And you start to do math and that goes from sounding like crazy to like, okay, well, if we put 30 in the machine, we could probably make it 120 out if you have a good rep on the other end of that. Mm -hmm. So 
when you get to a point like that, you have actual leverage in your business and it does run like a machine where you literally just dump more into ads, pile on a couple of talented human beings and you're, you're making way more money. So yeah, uh, love- yeah dude, I think that's where everybody's looking to be. Uh, dude, I love, and I love seeing people get there. Like it's so freaking cool. Cause it, like, and I want to get there too, obviously like I'm, I'm excited to uh, <laughs> push the bounds of what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, it really is like, at its core, it feels like a questioning whether it's even you. Like, like uh, it's the same thing. Like, it's the same thing from zero to ten, from ten to a hundred for me right now. It's like, do I deserve that? Like, is that really even mine? And should it be mine? And should I do that? And all these things. Um, and you think it's technical, but it's not. Like as you were saying that, I literally felt like sick to my stomach. I was like, frick, like that's exactly it, man. Like it's, I'm not even sure I deserve the level that I'm after. And like, I almost feel like what would I do with myself with that amount of freedom and that amount of impact? Like, am I really made of that? And so these are the sorts of questions that I feel like nobody really talks about. um, And nobody's willing to be honest and just be like, yeah, like it was a huge struggle to overcome myself and get to this stage because the world is built around getting you to submit and play. And honestly, it sounds like, conspiracy theory and it sounds like you know like i'm a weed smoking weirdo but really we're supposed to be cogs in a grander machine yeah we're supposed to think that we're not these things but and so there's just all kinds of subliminal programming like all of our movies all of our television shows all the education all points back to you know you stay in line and play your role and and don't think too hard about why things are the way they are just accept it um and it's just getting out of that getting out of that place 100 um yeah dude that's it's it's a solid it's, it's a solid thing uh, an agency i think agency to add on to that i think agency is like a business where you're like this is what you're meant to do you're 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 it's truly a business where like once it's working there's improvements that you can make but it's not like you know i own a SaaS company and i have to add on this feature or i have to fix this or i have to add this product we have to do an update like Your agency is really, it's a business that's a well-oiled machine. Like if appointments are coming in, if you're closing those appointments and if the clients that you're bringing on are getting good results and that's automated and in the way it's running, like there's really not much else to do. Of course, you can talk to customers, you can improve their experience, you can increase uh, or decrease your churn rate. There's little things that you can do, but like a fully functioning agency owner in a business like mine or yours isn't working, you know more than 40 hours a week like they're just not so i think agency is a business that is meant meant to be like i don't want to say passive but it's not meant to be like you're in the day-to-day operations because it it really is a pretty streamlined simple and you know not to say it's easy but it is simple business model and and, you know business to run yeah i like uh jim rohn's definition of simple i think we both really like jim rohn like jim rohn's definition of simple or, or easy and hard. It's like easy is, yeah. is it possible? It's easy. <laughs> it's like, you right. know, it's just Literally. like time will flow. What you do with the time is up to you. If you're, if you're saying, oh, it's so hard for me to do this. What you're saying is I'd rather time continue to move forward while I, you know, don't do it. But don't you know, if you're it. like, oh, it's going to take 60 hours to build this thing. It's like 60 hours is going to go by anyway. Like you're saying right. you're going to lose 60 hours. Like freaking talk, you're going to lose them anyway. You're losing time every second. Yep. Um, that's one thing I learned from Jim and mm-hmm. his like seminars and stuff is like, you know, if you're saying, oh, it's going to take me three years. It's like, well, yeah. And so we'll get started now. For th- yeah. Doing nothing for three years takes three years too. You could do something right. or not. And it's both are going to eat three years. You're going to die three years sooner after that process. Um, yep. yep. And I think that's what got me in the mindset of actually doing the work. You know, I talked about doing the work and I think that's what got me into the mindset of actually making it happen like because you know there's people out there right now that are more capable than you and i that are smarter than you and i that probably got better grades than you and i uh who were doing better than simply because we just did it and we were just like you know what we're not getting any younger time's moving at the same exact speed that it it always is going to let's just do it let's just see what happens and you know dude if you fail and you're 20 years on 21 if you if if I fail massively, it's like, okay, well, I'm still 21 years old. Uh, and that's like the best asset that I have. Uh, and, you know, you're young as well. It's the best asset that you have. And it's crazy to say that 
when you have a massive business and I've got a good sized business, but it's like, um, that's our best asset and time's not moving. It's always going to move at the same speed. It's going to go by whether you're, you know, you're on the boat or you're not. Yep. That's exactly it, dude. Well, sweet. It's been a pleasure having you on the channel, dude. I'm excited for you to come out to Indy and for me to come down to Nashville and just share a cigar or something soon. I know we're going to start making habit. So, uh, absolute pleasure, dude. Um, mm -hmm. hopefully we have you back on like six months a year from now and just get an update interview. I think it'd be cool. Dude, absolutely. And appreciate you having me. And for everybody listening, uh, when I, every time I talk to Trey, he's always talking about getting you guys and gals better results and how we can, uh, you know, improve on what he's already built out. That's already, you know, really fantastic. So, uh, if you're working with this guy, you're getting a good experience and he's always, uh, trying to improve and, and make sure all of you guys are doing better and growing and, uh, he gets really excited to to see the students, the clients in his community get get really good results. I mean, he gets more excited about y'all's results than he does his own. So it's pretty cool to see that. And I think it's uh, it's something that we can all be inspired by. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that, man. It's, it's where my heart's at. So, um, all right, dude. Pleasure. Speak soon. Thanks for having me on.